Uh, I come to the floor today to talk about an amendment I have pending right now to the bill pending on the floor to fix the unfair cuts to our military retirees. Let me just remind you of how we got here. How we got here is right before the holidays, there was a budget agreement that was reached between the chairman of the Senate Budget Committee and the chairman of the House Budget Committee. Let me just remind everyone in this chamber that uh, I serve on the Senate Budget Committee. No one on the Senate Budget Committee, at least myself, I wasn't included. I guess I missed it. Uh, did they bring to attention the budget agreement before it was brought as a fait accomplish to the floor? And that's one of the problems that brought us to where we are today. Only in Washington could you serve on the actual budget committee. They come up with a budget agreement and actually never show it to you, even though you're on the budget agreement. Because had they shown it to me in advance, I can tell you what I would have told them. This idea to single out our military retirees, totally unfair. It's the wrong priorities for America to single out those who have taken the bullets for us. When, if you look at the changes that were made in the budget agreement to the contributions for federal employees, they were prospective. They only new hires had to pay additional contributions. But for our men and women in uniform, those working age retirees under 62, and by the way, originally our wounded warriors were included in that as well, they took the cut. So when I did find out about it, and I see my colleague from South Carolina who also serves on the Senate Budget Committee here, when we found out about it, and others, also my colleague, Senator Wicker from Mississippi, we pointed out from the beginning before this body even voted on the budget agreement that the cuts to military retirees were unfair, that of all the people that we were going to single out, why would we single out the people who have taken the bullets for us? Uh, what kind of message does that send to those who have serviced and sacrificed so much for our country? So I remember it. We came down here before Christmas, before the holidays, Senator Graham, my colleague from South Carolina, came down here, Senator Wicker from Mississippi, and we said to our colleagues then, let's fix this. Let's fix this unfair cut now before we actually pass this budget into law because we have time to do it. And you know what the response we got? We're in a rush. Boy, we better get home to our families for the holidays rather than fix what was wrong from the beginning. And right now I hear so many of our colleagues come to the floor and say, we've got to fix this, even though they voted for this budget agreement. Senator, can you yield for a second? Is a question? Yes, I would yield for Thank a question. You. Thank Senator you. Senator from South Carolina. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Do you agree with me that if the budget uh, deal had not been paid for, it would never have passed? I would agree with that that most Republicans, and I'm sure some Democrats, would not have voted for a budget deal unless it was uh, deficit neutral, was paid for. I know it wouldn't have passed the House. So now, after the fact, if you fix the COLA problem without paying for it, wouldn't you have, haven't you basically blown the budget deal apart? Well, that's, that's the irony of where we find ourselves. You have people who, come, who came down here, even though we warned them and said, this is really unfair. Why are we doing this to military retirees? We should fix this now. We can find other ways to cut spending. And, and, and their response was, we'll fix it later. But our response was, well, will you pay for it later? And everybody said, yes. Yeah. So here we are. Right. And, and Senator Pryor and uh, 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 Kagan, uh, Hagan, uh, from North Carolina. I really appreciate them wanting to fix it. The good news is everybody in the body wants to undo the damage done to our military retirees. That's good news. The bad news is we're doing it in a fashion that would break the budget agreement. And I just don't think that should be our choice. 
to right or wrong to the military retirement community, which was a $6 billion, uh, you know, taking from them, unlike anybody else in the country, can't we not find $6 billion over the next 10 years to make up for it? Because if we don't, we've broken the budget agreement and we've put a burden on the next generation. So really, do, to help the veteran, the military retiree, do you have to turn around and, and screw future generations by adding $6 billion of debt on top of the $17 trillion? I guess that's the question. I would say no, and that's why I appreciate your offset. Well, the answer is no. Of course we don't. We don't have to burden the next generation to fix what we should have fixed from the beginning. And which was unfair from the beginning. And so that tell me, said, how, how does your offset, offset work? What are you proposing here? I have an offset uh, that is pretty straightforward. What it requires is that we have two major refundable tax, cre tax credits in our tax code, the earned income tax credit and the additional child tax credit, uh, both of which, when you claim them, you actually get money back under the tax code. And my amendment's pretty straightforward. When you file for the earned income tax credit, you actually have to put a social security number when you file for it as the tax filer. And, in, and also, um, if you have a dependent, you have to put a social security number. For the additional child tax credit, uh, there was a Treasury IG report done under this administration in 2011, and they raised real concerns about the way that this tax refund was being administered because when you filed for it, you didn't have to put a Social Security number. And also, any child that you were seeking a refund for, you didn't have to put uh, a Social Security number. If I could number. interrupt. So my fix is very straightforward. All I'm asking is that if you want to seek that tax refund for your child, you list a Social Security number for the child. And why is that important? It's important because the Treasury IG found that this tax refund, billions and billions of dollars going out the door. In fact, with the amendment that I just mentioned, we can save $20 billion over the next 10 years. There were investigations done of this tax refund, and guess what they found? Examples, massive examples of fraud, which I will go through in detail, of people claiming kids that may not even live in this country, of people claiming uh, kids who might live in Mexico, uh, because there's absolutely no parameters on what? the way this is being interpreted right now. And so here's the question. Should we fix fraud in our tax code uh, and really address this issue, still allowing American children and children who the president has said are eligible, uh, certain dreamer children, to get this tax refund who are real children in this country? Or should we just let this fraud continue and also add to our debt and not address the underlying problems facing our nation, uh, I don't understand why we can't pass well, something common you, sense like this. Let's see if I've got this right. There's an earned income tax credit that you can uh, receive uh, based on need. Is that right? Right. Okay. Exactly. I mean, we're not going to get it. You're not going to get it for your kids because you make too much money. Right. I think this is a Ronald Reagan idea. Uh, if you're working, even though you may, know ha may not have any income tax liability, we're going to give you an in earned income tax credit. I think it's $500 per child. Is that right? I, on, this, is, this is the earned income. We're yeah, talking no. about the additional tax Yeah, I know. Tax but under the earned income tax credit. I don't know the amount for Okay. The I think it's 500 But the point is, do you have to have a Social Security number? Yes. Okay. If the argument is that by adding a Social Security number requirement to the additional tax credit, you're somehow burdening people. Why isn't that argument made against the EITC? Because to get the earned income tax credit, you have to have a Social Security number. This new additional tax credit on top of the earned income tax credit doesn't have the same requirement. So those who come down here and say we're destroying families, why don't you come down here and propose to do away with a Social Security number on the in earned income tax credit? That would make perfect sense to me. If requiring a Social Security number is a bad thing for families, why do you tolerate it for the EITC? The reason you wouldn't propose that change is because people in Treasury would say you'd be crazy because now you got an additional tax credit, something new on top of the EITC, 
that Senator Ayotte has found, without a Social Security number, you have $19 billion in fraud. So I'm really curious. If you think requiring a Social Security number for a child to get an earned income uh, additional tax credit is destroying the family, why don't you come down here and change the law for the EITC? If you did that, you would get blistered by the auditor saying you're opening up a new lane of fraud, a new line of fraud. So could you tell us what would happen to the American taxpayer? What benefit would inure to the American taxpayer if we followed your proposal and accepted your amendment of requiring a Social Security number? The American taxpayer, we'd save $20 billion over the next 10 years. And this is about protecting the American taxpayer, because let me just talk about some of the fraud that was found. Um, in Indiana, they uh, found that four workers were claiming 20 children live inside one residence, and the IRS sent these uh, illegal immigrants tax refunds of a total of $29,000 plus. They also found that uh, many people were claiming that the tax credit for kids who live in Mexico. These are our taxpayer dollars going out the door in this way. An Indiana tax preparer who acted as a whistleblower uh, said we've seen sometimes 10 or 12 dependents, most, most times nieces and nephews on these tax reforms. The more you put on there, the more you get back, even though they're not verifying that any of these children live here, exist, and that's our tax money going out the door. The whistleblower had thousands of examples. And another example from a whistleblower, we've got 10, over $10,000 in refunds for nine nieces and nephews, he said. And it's so easy. I can bring out stacks and stacks. It's just so easy. It's ridiculous. In North Carolina, investigators tied at least 17 tax returns, totaling more than $62,000 in returns, to a Charlotte, North Carolina apartment that one woman leased. At another apartment nearby, investigators discovered 153 returns valued at over $700,000 in refunds. Another address in the same apartment complex had 236 ref returns worth over a million dollars in returns. Now, this is money taken into our treasury and turned back in. And all we're saying with this amendment is, if you can put a Social Security number for the child you're claiming the credit for, you can get this credit. That's all this is, making this consistent with the earned income tax credit. And in fact, the filer, the filer can be an undocumented worker in this country and have a child that legitimately has a Social Security number and get the credit for it. And so we've, I've modified my amendment to address that issue. And so what we're saying is this, let's end fraud and let's take that money that is being taken from the American taxpayer and take $20 billion. Six billion of it can be used to restore these military cuts to make sure that we do not burden the next generation and we fix a wrong that should be righted. Let me talk about some other examples of what we've seen. In Tennessee, a search warrant was prepared by the IRS uh, for a tax company who was encouraging, encouraging undocumented workers to lie on their tax returns by claiming children who live in Mexico as dependents. Why can this tax preparer even encourage that? Because right now, when the additional child tax credit, when that refund is filed for, you don't have to put anything about the child to prove that the child exists. So simply by requiring a Social Security number for the child you're getting money back for would end that fraud. The IRS says that the Tennessee tax preparer has filed 6,000 tax returns over the last three years. And although his client, listen to this, although his clients only paid $3.3 million in taxes, they were able to receive back $17 million in refunds. Can you imagine 3.3 million in taxes that his clients as a whole claim that they paid, and they received 17 million dollars in refunds back? Pretty good deal, isn't it? Well, it's a bad deal for the American taxpayer. And so this amendment I hate it. 
makes so much common sense. I just hope that I can get a vote on this on the floor of the United States Senate. Because in the past, when I have tried to bring this amendment forward, I have been denied a vote on many occasions. And, what are we and so I hope that God, the people yeah. of this country understand what the vote on the floor is. Okay. The vote on the floor is straightforward. This amendment, we can fix the unfair cuts to our military retirees. Not sure I also ensure that we aren't breaking the budget agreement that was just passed or burdening the next generation with debt. In fact, my amendment will further reduce the debt because it saves more money than just paying for this fix. And we can also fix tax fraud, do the right thing by the American taxpayer. And I can tell you what worries me most is this is Washington. It just makes so much sense that uh, I fear that I won't get a vote on this and that my colleagues will use excuses to say we shouldn't vote for this because I heard uh, my colleague from Illinois on the floor this morning saying we're going to harm children. Well, children will still be able to get this refund Put a social security number, American children will get this refund, and also children that the president has already deemed eligible, so-called dreamers. In fact, my colleague from Illinois who came to the floor this morning admitted already a half million of them have filed and have for a social security number, and they too could receive this tax refund. But if we don't pass this amendment, there's one group, there's two groups that lose, the veterans but also, most importantly, also all of us, the American taxpayer. I just wanted, before I conclude, I wanted to mention the groups that are endorsing my amendment. The American Legion, American Veterans, AMVETS, Concerned Veterans for America, the Military Officers Association of America, the National Guard Association of the United States, the National Military Family Association, the Naval Enlisted Reserve Association, the Retired Enlisted Association, the U.S. Army Warrant Officers Association, the U.S. Coast Guard Chief Petty Officers Association, and the U.S. Coast Guard Enlisted Association. I hope my colleagues will vote for this common sense amendment because we can fix this unfair cut to our military retirees and pay for it and make sure that we aren't also adding to our debt and burdening future generations. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the floor. Mr. President.